Welcome to this afternoon's edition of 10 TV Plus. I'm Dylan Robichaud alongside Michael Behrens. Got a little bit of ice out there yesterday. Mm. For the most part, though, like we thought, road temperatures thankfully stayed warm enough that we didn't shut down the city, but yeah. definitely pretty icy out there. I was going to say, it got a little bit slippery out there, depending on where you were at. Bridges, overpasses, exactly what we were talking about yeah. yesterday, were the bigger problems. And, and mostly just the cars last night. If you left the house around, say, 10, 11 o'clock, uh, you had a good coating of ice. Yeah, good vehicle. coating of ice out there. But luckily, soil temperatures kept us in the green and didn't impact things too much. So yeah, that's good. Absolutely. But we do have more potential mixed precip on the way heading into this weekend. We'll get to that coming up in roughly two minutes. First of all, let's get you through today where we are going to see some gradual clearing, some sunshine on the way for Friday. And in fact, if you like the blue sky, you're going to like the forecast heading into Friday. And then, of course, Saturday, all eyes focus on that mixed bag of precip. Still cloudy out here as we head into the early afternoon hours. And as we get a look at your sunrise, look at your day link now. Close to 10 hours and 20 minutes as that sunset is at 5.56 p.m. We're gaining a whopping two minutes of daylight every single day. And in fact, we're getting ever so closer to that 7 p.m. to that 7 p.m. to that 6 p.m. sunset rather. By Valentine's Day, it'll be around 6.05 p.m., so definitely getting quite a bit later. Now, as we head into the month of February over the next few weeks, we're going to gain a whopping 60 minutes of daylight here in the orange. Further down to the south, you gain less. Further to the north in the yellow, you will be gaining more daylight. And, of course, we keep on gaining it as we get closer towards uh, the months of uh, May and June as we get towards that summer solstice, which will be in just a few months before you know it. All right, let's focus on that weather forecast. And, again, as we head into the weekend, look at this by Saturday, dealing with that mixed bag of rain and snow. Sunday, Super Bowl Sunday, actually looks like the better of the two days if you like the sunshine. But let's talk about what you can expect heading into Saturday. Now, this is not... A morning event on Saturday. This is going to be a Saturday evening event by 12 p.m. Take a look at this. That mixed bag of sleet, potential freezing rain working up to the north. You'll notice that as we head towards 4 o'clock on Saturday from Delaware down to London, Springfield, Bell Fountain, getting in on the, that salmon like color. What exactly is that? That is that risk of some freezing rain and that just continues. But something interesting will happen by around five six o'clock so here is that belt of that freezing rain but then look down towards Chillicothe are you guys getting freezing rain uh-uh nope that's going to be all rain and the reason why is because temperatures are starting to warm up we're pumping in that above freezing air from the south and then before you know it we flip the switch and things will be just plain old rain as we head towards six seven eight o'clock but there will be some travel impacts nonetheless, so I just want to warn you of that. Now, freezing rain generally south, or I'm sorry, freezing rain generally north of the Pickaway County line. And so this whole area could be expecting uh, upwards of a tenth to maybe two tenths of an inch of that freezing rain down to the south. Just plain old rain. Thankfully, knock on wood, we don't see any icing down there. Now, here's the ice potential. This is brand new model information showing that, again, I-70 is kind of the, the cutoff. North of the interstate, we're looking at a better chance of freezing rain. South of the interstate, not as much. But I do want you to be prepared. Is this enough to bring down trees and power lines? Most likely not, but you could be looking at a few uh, slippery sidewalks, bridges, and overpasses here. Similar to last night, though, road temperatures still pretty warm, middle and upper 30s, so I'm not expecting wide-scale icing on the major roadway arteries. Now, Generally speaking, temperatures are actually near normal heading into the second and third weeks of February. Above average rainfall will continue as we head into the next couple of weeks as well. Check out the temperatures here. Average high 39 and we're going down. Look at that by Tuesday and Wednesday, looking at highs in the middle end of the 30s. That downward trajectory will continue. We have this uh, yellow line which shows normal air. Eventually, as we get towards that next week, we go from milder air to more seasonable, if you will, through the second week of uh, February. Hey, if you don't like the cold, spring is just 42 days away. That will for sure be here before you know it. So you can look forward to that. But in the meantime, we have a couple different opportunities of these mixed bag situations where we could be looking at rain and or snow. Let's talk about Saturday right now. And you'll notice that as we head into Saturday, again, starting the day off, not too bad, but we are tracking that belt of freezing rain. Here's a look at four o'clock. 
And then this is really when we see that freezing rain taking over and then eventually becoming all rain by six o'clock. And then as we head through the afternoon, things eventually improve by late night. Then as we head towards Tuesday, something else happens. We have another threat of a storm, but this go around, we could possibly be tracking snow. Possibly is the key word here. It all depends on the track. If it takes track number one, which is closer to Southeast Ohio, we could be looking at that belt of snow. If it takes track number two, which is further away, we could be looking at dry air. Let's see what the computer guidance is showing. And you'll notice that as we head into Tuesday, look at this. We get, I guess what you would call is kind of a brush by. We're not getting a direct hit with heavy snow on Tuesday, but a couple of inches, I think so. I definitely think that's a possibility. And then as we head towards Tuesday night, See you later. Things improve and uh, just some leftover snow showers as we head into the day on Wednesday. More mixed precip off to the west. Hopefully that misses us, but we're going to be tracking another low that moves in by the middle of next week. That was a lot to digest. Let's put up the seven day for a few seconds so you can look at it for yourself. Again, tomorrow, the sunniest day of the week. Saturday, that mixed bag of rain and snow. Sunday, we are tracking dry weather, same thing for Monday, and then tracking another threat of snow, possibly Tuesday and Wednesday, but the track matters. Yep. You know, it was it, tempting when we got into the 50s and we got all that warm air in, in the past week to think, okay, we're getting out of the winter woods. That's just not the case this time of year. Not in February, you're not going to get that lucky. Yeah, this time of the year, you get that higher sun angle. Sometimes the seasons kind of collapse, but we're definitely not done with the snow. It's still pretty early in winter. Yeah, and I say not to brag about the uh, the winter forecast from the, the 10 weather impact team, but we are predicting more snowfall compared to average this yeah. winter, and we achieved that in January, and you know, if that track ends up here next week, we could be adding to it. What we don't want is that freezing rain, because yeah. last night that was pretty bad. Absolutely. That is the stuff that we never want to see out there, because no one likes ice. Right. You can't have any fun with that. And speaking of the storm that came through, I we want to look back at some of the impacts as that system rolled through last night. One of the most interesting aspects of the wintry mix and freezing rain we saw around the Midwest last night is that it was coming from some pretty active thunderstorms. This is video from Pandrew WX on Twitter who shared video of those lightning strikes happening in the Lebanon, Indiana area. Last night we were tracking at one point several hundred lightning strikes every 10 minutes across the Midwest, mostly between Indiana and Ohio. And reports like this were coming in from all around the region. And another impact just to our south parts of West Virginia experiencing floodwaters after heavy rain came through overnight into this morning, swept over the area and residents in Huntington and nearby towns captured videos like this of the floodwaters rushing through neighborhoods in the area. Huntington is located near the state line between West Virginia and Southern Ohio. That area has seen around two to three inches of rainfall so far from that system that came through. And again, that flooding there uh, showing some big impacts this morning. Speaking of those impacts here in Ohio, here's some uh, photos that you guys sent in to us here at 10 TV. This is from Daryl Kyle in Athens um, last night or really this morning. You can see uh, that sort of shimmer of the ice on surfaces out there. Uh, all what you're seeing there on the, the it looks like to be some kind of fencing is mm -hmm. all ice. All of the grass is covered in ice and the trees as well, uh, showing those icy conditions that came through um, in the past 24 hours. We take another look here um, from Cena up in Laurelville. And wow. That's a lot of <laughs> ice on the trees there. Um, thankfully, again, we didn't get that on the roads because that uh, would be a very messy situation. Uh, similar pictures coming in. Picture here from Richard and Marty Smith. This was in Tarleton. You can see the ice there uh, forming on the trees, those icicles as the rain froze as it dripped down last night. Um, cool photo there. And then many of us, like I said earlier, woke up to ice on the vehicles out there this morning. This is from Jared in New Lexington showing ice on the windshield, the windshield wipers this morning. Um, you know, Jerry last night told me he forgot to put his wipers up before the snow, or the, the freezing Working rain started mistake. to come down. So, <laughs> yeah, that's the situation here. You got to got to get those wipers out. Otherwise, you could uh, sometimes end up seeing those situations like that where that ice actually sticks again to um, those windshield surfaces. I do want to go back um, to our weather system here real quick and just show you that recap again of the storm as it, it pushed through last night. This is the scale of things as it rolled through. I'll back it up here um, to last night right about uh, 10 o'clock 
and you can see all of the ice and freezing rain across central Ohio and Indiana. And I do want to highlight just some of that lightning out there again. Look at this over in Indiana, all of that freezing rain mm. coming down with lightning strikes as well. Let me see if I can put a counter on here and count the strikes we were looking at at that point. 157 strikes wow. just in that box. So, I mean, that is like active spring thunderstorm, except it's coming down in this case with freezing rain. And then again, the good news was really all night long that we were seeing the melting come through. Because if I switch back over here to Ohio and I'll put on the radar estimated ice accumulation over the last 24 hours. Look at down south. You see those bright purples? If that wasn't melting, that'd be close to 0 0.4, 0 0.5 inches of ice. That would have been really some kind of catastrophic ice that could have come down last night, but our temperatures were warm enough at the ground, most of that melted. And that's what really spared us from having a major power outage event, ice storm event here in Ohio. Dodged the bullet on that one. And again, just to the south, I'll switch to the rainfall estimates. That's where they're dealing with the flooding concerns. And you can see some of those bright, brighter reds. Those are in excess of two and a half inches of rainfall down in West Virginia and southern portions of Ohio, just on the southern edge of our viewing area. And they are still dealing uh, with flooding concerns out there this morning. These are the flood alerts in place. They do cover far southern portions of Ohio. Again, dealing with the impacts of that rain that came Wow, through. yeah, especially West Virginia, whatnot, where you have the Appalachian Mountains, it hits the mountains and everything runs off. It makes, it definitely makes perfect sense why they had that kind of flooding out there. Luckily here uh, in the Ohio Valley, I mean, we didn't have major impacts like that, but that yeah. icing just insane. Absolutely, I mean, again, we dodged the bullet when it came to that for sure. Yeah. <laughs> and turning away from the winter weather now to some interesting climate news, scientists start actually looking to space to track tiny creatures here on Earth known as krill in the Antarctic. The shrimp-like animals are vital to marine life and climate regulation. CBS's Sahar Zand reports from London. Tiny but mighty. Antarctic krill are dubbed superheroes of the Southern Ocean. Only a few centimeters long, these tiny creatures are a powerhouse crucial to our planet's ecosystem. They're a primary food source for whales and penguins. And without them, entire food chains could collapse. But krill do more than just feed marine life. They play a key role in combating global warming. They absorb as much carbon dioxide each year as hundreds of millions of cars emit, locking it away in the deep oceans for decades. But rising sea temperatures and overfishing are putting them at risk. In a bid to protect krill, scientists have launched an ambitious space mission to track them from orbit. But the great thing about satellite data is that you can get coverage of the entire Southern Ocean and Antarctica. So it's quite powerful for understanding better their spatial distributions in Antarctica. Satellites detect krill swarms by the way they tint the ocean surface, a potentially powerful tool for safeguarding this vital species. Sahar Zand, CBS News. London. Finally today, let's check out some new video into us here at 10TV. You ever wonder what happens to all those old Christmas trees? We throw them down the back hill. Now they gotta go somewhere. <laughs> the animals are seen tossing around trees and foraging for snacks in their branches at the Brookfield Zoo in Illinois. Recently, uh, the Puds and the Polar Bear there and Tim the Brown Bear searched for those treats in the trees. They were stocked with meat, fruit, and vegetables. Joe, the American bison, rubbed his face against a fir tree to help get his coat to shed. Lions, Brutus, and Titus also foraged for frozen milk and meat. The zoo said over 900 balsam furs were repurposed from their holiday magic event to provide animal enrichment and seasonal habitat enhancement like wind barriers. Ooh. So look at that. Look at that. Christmas for everybody there. There's the lion. Is he going for it? Oh, there it goes. Go up in the tree. <laughs> just like my cat at home. I don't think that's going to support that weight. No, just like my cat at home, knocking <laughs> over the Christmas tree. And video from eyewitnesses in Japan on Tuesday showed at Mount Izola some snowboarders and skiers climbing the side of the mountain as others waited in a long line for cable cars amid heavy snowfall to take them back to their hotels. We're talking about heavy snowfall in that region um, that broke records. This was in the Hokkaido 
uh, prefecture where hotels and ski resorts are located, they picked up 129 centimeters, translated to about over 50 inches of snowfall wow. in just 12 hours on Tuesday. How crazy is that? Japan's meteorological agency says a strong winter pressure pattern is forecast to continue and heavy snow is expected to last through today in swaths of the area, including western and southern Japan. That is a lot of skiers trying to get back. Well, and to we've the done this explanation before is that Japan is actually one of the snowiest places on the earth because mm -hmm. you have cold air coming down from Siberia, Russia, going over the Sea of Japan. Picks up all that moisture. It's same exact thing as that lake effect snow that we have off of Lake Erie. Yeah. And that is, a, a, again, 50 inches of snow in 12 hours. That's a lot. That's a lot of snow. That, that is insane. I'm a, I'm a snow guy, so thank you for putting that in. <laughs> cool video <laughs> Made my there. day. Absolutely. Uh, all right. Well, that does it for us here on 10TV+. Plus. Not to worry, though. Chief Meteorologist Jerry Martz is back on 10TV News starting right at 6.